Should Preachers Be Paid to Preach? Hi there, friend. This is Lee Posky. Well, this morning, I visited a preacher's blog, and I came to a section where he solicited donations from visitors. And so I asked him, why do you do that? He didn't really have an answer. He's a young man, so I did not approach him like he's a crook or something like that. But you know, a lot of preachers really are crooks. But I did not approach him like that because he's a relatively young man. And I believe that in his relatively young years as a man, he just needs some discipling to enhance his discernment. So what happened was he and I had a polite visit about preachers asking people for money. I also expressed to him that I've never once asked people to donate to my ministry on any platform that I've ever operated on. I simply will not take money for sharing with others what God has freely given to me. And that's what I really believe on the inside about this. Why am I telling you this? I'm telling you this to demonstrate to you, first of all, that I'm not a hypocrite. I'm telling you this to demonstrate to you how strongly I regard the matter of profiting from the gospel. So let's look at this matter further. First of all, you need to know that you are not under the tithe. I already have a video, which I'll link in this message, that teaches about the tithe. So I'm not going to rehash that info here. And by the way, any preacher who puts you under the tithe is either a deceiver or he's ignorant about the tithe. In either case, you should not be getting your doctrine from such men. So what about preachers getting paid, getting donation, things like that? Well, let's consider this. The tribe of Levi was exclusively set apart in the Old Covenant to do the work of God in the tabernacle. And their pay, if you will, was the tithe, which were agricultural products, not money, to sustain their lives and families. But the Levitical priesthood and their work is now obsolete now that Christ has come. So where is the right scripture to, to learn about um, preacher's pay in the New Covenant? Well, this matter is dealt with beautifully in 1 Corinthians 9, 1 through 18. This is Paul speaking by inspiration of God. Am I not an apostle? Am I not free? Have I not seen Jesus Christ our Lord? Are not ye my work in the Lord? If I be not an apostle unto others, yet doubtless I am to you. For the seal of mine apostleship are ye in the Lord. Mine answer to them that do examine me is this. Have we not power to eat and to drink? Have we not power to lead about a sister, a wife, as well as other apostles, and as the brethren of the Lord, and Cephas? Or I only, and Barnabas, have not we power to forbear working? Pause there. Paul is testifying to his rights that accompany his position of being an apostle of God. However, as we're going to soon see, just because someone has a right to do something, that doesn't always mean they should do it. Verse 7, Who goeth a warfare at any time at his own charges? Who planteth a vineyard, and eateth not of the fruit thereof? Or who feedeth a flock, and eateth not of the milk of the flock? I say these things, excuse me, say I these things as a man, or saith not the law the same also? For it is written in the law of Moses, Thou shalt not muzzle the mouth of the ox that treadeth out the corn. Doth God take care for oxen? Or saith he it altogether for our sakes? For our sakes, no doubt, this is written, that he that ploweth should plow in hope, and that he that thresheth in hope should be partaker of his hope. If we have sown unto you spiritual things, is it a great thing if we shall reap your carnal things? Pause there. He's communicating that missionaries such as himself, who travel around preaching as he does, have every right to modest support as their needs require. He's not saying that preachers should live posh lives from preaching the gospel. He's also not promoting anything like institutional religion that we have today. Moreover, this segment of scripture is more about Paul establishing his equality with other, with other apostles than it is about his getting paid. Listen to this, verse 12. If others be partakers of this power over you, are not we rather? Nevertheless, we have not used this power, but suffer all things, lest we should hinder the gospel of Christ. Did you hear that, friend? 
Continuing in verse 13. Do ye not know that they which minister about holy things live of the things of the temple? And they which wait at the altar are partakers with the altar? Even so hath the Lord ordained that they which preach the gospel should live of the gospel. Wait for it. Here it comes. Verse 15. But I have used none of these things, neither have I written these things, that it should be so done unto me. For it were better for me to die than that any man should make my glorying void. For though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of. For necessity is laid upon me, yea, woe is unto me, if I preach not the gospel. For if I do these, this thing willingly, I have a reward. But if against my will, a dispensation of the gospel is committed unto me. What is then my, excuse me, what is my reward then? Verily that, when I preach the gospel, I may make the gospel of Christ without charge, that I abuse not my power in the gospel. End of quote. Also, it would interest you to know that Paul worked outside of religion as he preached as a matter of conscience. Listen to Acts 18, 1 through 4. After these things, Paul departed from Athens and came to Corinth and found a certain Jew named Aquila, born in Pontus, lately come from Italy, with his wife Priscilla, because that Claudius had commanded all Jews to depart from Rome and came unto them. And listen to this. And because he was of the same craft, he abode with them, and wrought, that is, and worked, and wrought, for by their occupation they were tent makers. And he reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath, and persuaded the Jews and the Greeks. End of quote. So you see, friend, when someone gets paid to preach, you'll find their message to be compromised, to not offend the people who give them money. But... When a preacher refuses to take money for sharing what God puts on his heart, he's beholding to no man. So with that, I'm going to leave you with Paul's words in Galatians 1.10. For do I now persuade men or God, or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. Amen. All right. Well, I thank you for sharing some of your valuable time with me. And all glory to the risen Lord Jesus Christ, and no glory to us whatsoever. Bye-bye.